We'd just like to say to the men and the women in the U.S. military that no matter where you go, no matter what happens, we, we support you! And that is how we feel about that. Hello and welcome to Disc TV, the show that brings you the world of disc golf. I'm Brian Sullivan. This week we're in Augusta, Georgia for the Augusta Classic. Now this is essentially a warm up to the U.S. Championships next weekend. And a lot of the big guns are here. Who's going to win it? Stay tuned and find out. Disc TV is on the air right now. Also this week, we'll sit down for an extended interview with 11-time disc golf world champion Ken Climo, who talks about his recent victories. Plus, news about progress on the PDGA's National Disc Golf Center. It's all about disc golf. This is Disc TV. Good pot. TV is brought to you in part by the Professional Disc Golf Association, guiding disc golf into the future. Irving's famous Chicago style hot dogs. For red hot lovers, make it Irving's. Maceman Disc Golf Gear. Expect the best. And by DiscLife.com, the world leader in disc golf. Welcome to Disc TV's coverage of the 2002 Augusta Classic here in Augusta, Georgia. Brian Sullivan with Tournament Director Pete May. Pete, great to see you. Glad to be here and glad to have you here. Thanks. So first of all, let's uh, talk a little bit about the tournament. Give me uh, some of the history of this tournament and who has won it in the past. Well, this tournament is, I think, been 12 years. Uh, this is the 12th annual Augusta Classic. Ken Climo's probably won five or six times. Greg Hosfeld won just a couple of years ago. Last year's winner was Larry Leonard. He played great last year. so. Uh, and our female winners, Juliana's probably won the last five or six times in a row. She's dominated the field as she's done many times. So. No surprise there. So that's no surprises there, but uh, that's been the history of our winners the last uh, five, six years. Okay, what about the courses? The Riverview Park course is a tight course. It has 12 holes that are in a very swampy type wood setting with tight fairways, maybe 10 blind holes so the players will have to get in the practice round and know where to shoot the shots. If they go in the woods, it's a shot penalty for sure. You cannot come out without a shot penalty. So for players that are not familiar with this course, it's gonna cost them. If you're familiar with Riverview and stay in the fairway, you can shoot some low scores here. Our other course, Pendleton King Park, is a flat course, very traditional old style course, and it's hard to shoot much under par there and it's hard to shoot much over par. It just, you kind of take for what it is and you shoot one or two under, one or two over. And uh, really, it doesn't even hurt the, the AM players. They shoot about the same thing. The pros don't run away with them over at Pendleton King. So I see the ground's going to be made up here at Riverview Park. And if there's one style of player who might have a better chance of winning this weekend, what type of style? You know, a long game, a, a you know, solid putting no. game, a wind game? This is not a boomer course, neither course. It's the putters win here and the players that can turn the disc. There's a lot of disc turning here, so both right and left. So players that can turn a disc mid-range, mid real well, skip shots, and putt well. Putters will win here. So let's talk about who is here, who's uh, signed up to play, and who do you think uh, might have a chance to win this weekend? Well, uh, naturally, uh, the favorite is Ken Climo. He's here, he's familiar with the course, he's won a number of times. He would certainly be the betting favorite. Barry Schultz is here. Brad Hammock is here, and Brad is my dark horse candidate because Brad used to live in Augusta. Lived here two years, played these courses every day. If Brad's game is on, I'd give him an edge because he's so familiar with the courses. And he's this year's World Masters Absolutely. champion. Absolutely, and so uh, if he's putting hot, I'm gonna say he's my dark horse candidate. And what about on the women's side? On the women's side, I'd have to say Leslie Herndon is a head zone odds to win this. Pete, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again real soon. In the meantime, let's get you right out to the action. Okay. We're in Augusta, Georgia, also known as the home of the Masters Ball Golf Tournament. There were no women at the Augusta National Course today, no other players out there either for that matter. Apparently the rain kept them in the clubhouse. A little rain and mild flooding, only distractions for the ever-obsessed disc golfers who came out in force for the Augusta Classic. The format this weekend, four rounds of 18, then a cut to the top four open players for a final nine showdown. The conditions, well, we had a little of everything this weekend, from rain to sunshine, fog, and some overcast skies. One thing for sure, there was a lot of fun to be had. 
It's the warm-up for the U.S. Championships, and we start with the women's division. Mandy Snodgrass of North Carolina is new to the pro ranks, and she came out strong with a 5 over par 59 to put her in second place after round one. Now, can you believe there are no women members at the Augusta National Ball Golf Club? What, are they nuts? Are they insane? Another 59, round two, Snodgrass would then struggle at the longer Riverview course in round three. In the end, the short game would save a final stroke third place tie with Alabama's Kimberly Newman, who would play fairly solid disc golf at the easier Pendleton King Park in rounds one and two, but the long pads round three is where she was making it happen. Check this putting form if you're looking to improve your own putt. Kimberly Newman with a nice extension, the follow through, deuce. She had third place by one stroke going into round four, could not hang on. Newman ties for third again. Check the fine putting form. Very nice. Another new women's pro player this season, Georgia's Courtney Peavy, who is all about focus when it comes to getting the job done. As a result, Peavy goes head to head with Newman every single step of the way. Peavy would lead the battle by one stroke after round two at Pendleton King, then gave the stroke back after round three when it was tied up between the pair. Peavy had the approach game dialed in for the final round, and an 11 over par 65 is going to put Georgia's Courtney Peavy into second place by a two stroke margin. Leslie Hearn of Alabama, no apologies as she tore up the field here in Augusta with shots like this. Big round one with an even par would put Herndon at an early lead. That would continue to build throughout the weekend. Second round, one under par. That would be the top women's score of the weekend. A huge roller shot here. Pull 18, third round, 395 feet to the basket. This one going to roll right past the basket. Friendly kick. It's going to be a deuce. From the shul, bring it. And Leslie Herndon dominates. There is your winner in the women's division at the Augusta Classic. Masters Division, just George's Mike Newman. Now he knows the woods, and a couple of one under par rounds had him in the pack until a round best four under par 50 at the finish brought Mike Newman into fourth place. Way to close it out, Mr. Newman. Never too late to bust a move. Now every sport I say needs a beaver. Here's Alan Beaver, North Carolina. He was inducted earlier this year into the Disc Golf Hall of Fame. Now he's a crafty one, and is especially fond of hitting monster putts on any given hole. Huge round two for the Beaver car, leading a six under par 48, and he managed to keep every round this weekend at or under par. A dogfight at the end, but Alan Beaver could not shake another crafty dog, Kirk Yo, also of North Carolina. Now, don't ask this guy to show you his battle scars unless you've got an hour to spare. Now, Yo is money and started solid with a three under par 51, then kicked it into high gear to bag a seven under 47 in round two. That would put him temporarily in the lead. Stumbling in round three, he was two over par. Yoke finds himself locked into a tie for second place with Alan Beaver. The two went at it for 18 holes. Both finished one under for the round, nine under for the tournament. Second place tie is where that ends up. So, who was beating up on the other Masters? It's another North Carolina Disc Golf Hall of Famer, Stan the Man McDaniel. It was all about consistency in McDaniel's world, who carded two four-unders, followed by a pair of two-unders. From 85 feet out, and McDaniel is in the zone. He told us he hasn't had much time to play this year, but as always, McDaniel remains a force to be reckoned with, and there is your Masters winner at the 2002 Augusta Classic. Open division, Walt Snoop Haney. He comes from the land down under, well, under par. Anyway, the North Carolina native started with a respectable seven under par, then a nine down in round two to keep pace with the other leaders. A deadly forehand flick here. Haney taking this one to the house. He's in fourth place. The little man with the big arm is George's Brad Hammock. Now, he won the World Masters title this year and is competing with the big boys this weekend in the Open Division. Now, Hammock has a style all his own and an amazing knack for bagging the unexpected deuces. Boom, 27 under going into the final nine. Hammock sits in third. 11 world titles in 13 years, only one guy going to make that happen, Florida's Ben Climo. Now the way Climo beat you is to lull you into a false sense of security by starting a few strokes out of the lead, then he turns it on for a strong finish. Here in Augusta, business as usual as the champs stayed in the fairways, avoided the bogeys. After three rounds, Ken Climo 28 under and sitting in second place. 
Our leader going into the final nine, Michigan's David Feldberg, who was hot in the first two rounds of Pendleton King Park, two back-to-back -back rounds of 45, putting him at 18 under after two. Seven and six under rounds followed at the tougher Riverview course. And with nine to go, David Feldberg leads it by three over Climo, followed by Hammock and Haney. Coming up, it's the final nine holes from the Augusta Classic in Augusta, Georgia. You are watching Disc TV. Leslie Herndon is our women's champ this weekend. Leslie destroyed the rest of the field. <laughs> yeah, I had a pretty good weekend, I'd say. Tell me how it went for you out there. Um, it went re really well from the start. Um, yesterday I had no fours. I had one five and one six, but uh, pretty consistent. And uh, today went really well, which surprised me with it being rainy this morning. I uh, ended up with only one bad hole, and then the same the second round, just one bad hole again. So, so you, you took a lot of uh, strokes from the other players in the rain, you think? Yeah, I did, for sure. <laughs> so it's lucky number seven on the national tour for you, uh, and you're looking forward to number eight where? Um, Oklahoma Great. will be our next stop. Looking forward to seeing you there. Congratulations. Right. Thanks a lot. Here in Augusta, Georgia, when you mention the word golf, you naturally think, well, sticks and balls. It may be very soon, that might not necessarily be the case. As you may know, the PDGA is looking to bring the PDGA National Disc Golf Center potentially to Augusta, Georgia. For a local perspective, we've got with us today the director of the Columbia County Parks and Recreation Department, Charlie Beal. Charlie, thanks for being here. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity. So this would be the PDGA National Disc Golf Center here in the county. Why disc golf? Well, uh, Brian Graham brought the idea to us a couple of years ago, and I've, I've watched disc golf over the years, uh, kind of developed uh, back from the 70s and kind of downhill and then back up and, and watch the growth. Being a, a recreation person, I kind of keep up with trends like that. So um, we put a course in a couple of years ago at, at a new park we had developed, and uh, we were looking for some new ideas for a, a larger park that we have, which is 975 acres. And uh, Brian again came to us and says uh, the PGA uh, is looking for a um, location for its national headquarters. And I said, well, we think we got a spot. <laughs> so it, did, uh, it, has, it has started to grow from that, uh, that point and, and continued to grow. So we're looking at uh, uh, a location up on the lake uh, and possibly three courses up there and the national headquarters along with a uh, clubhouse. We're looking at some major development within the park, not only uh, with the boat ramp for fishing tournaments and, and the Disc Golf Association, but some other events. This is a, a real national perspective. So tell me, Charlie, how far through this process are you right now with the PDGA? We're, we're both uh, parties right now are kind of developing a contract together, uh, looking at each other. They're, they're doing part, we're doing part, and, and hopefully within the next six months we'll get together and, and finalize the contract. So after years and years of discussion of the disc golf mecca, it may finally be coming a reality. And this guy right here is a big part of that. Charlie Beal, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. And good luck as this process moves forward. We appreciate forward. the opportunity. So Pete, what's the course record here? The course record here is 13 under. Greg Hosfield shot that a few years ago mm -hmm. on a non-windy day. The course has been reconfigured. I'd say it's playing at least five shots tougher now. So there's a good chance we're going to see a new course record. We will this see a weekend. new course record under this configuration. There's none. This doesn't have one. So we'll see. A, it's going to be interesting to see what players shoot on this new setup. Time to take a closer look at one of the holes that the pros are going to be shooting this weekend. We're on hole 17 here at Riverview Park in Augusta. We're with tournament director Pete May. Pete, let me say, first of all, it's a beautiful hole. Tell me about it. Well, in the past, it was a wide open hole, very easy to make a three, very few twos. So what happened is now we have lined the fairway with a set of crepe myrtles that give you an OB on the left and gives you still have the OB on the right, which is the cart path, but now you have to throw a turnover shot if you're a right-handed player. And as we know, the turnovers tend to pull back to the left when they hit. So it's very tight, and if there's any wind, this course is going to see a lot of fours this weekend. Well, we have a little wind at the moment going from uh, left to right. Is that going to uh, really affect our shots? Here? Left to the right is going to carry the turnover shots all the way to OB to the cart path. Absolutely. And what's our total distance to the basket? Total distance is about 340 from right here. Shall we give it a go? Let's do it. All right. So, Pete, what's your game plan here? Well, my game plan is I have a slightly understable disc here that I'm going to throw out and attempt to do a turnover shot that will go just about up to where the pine tree is 
and stay enough left that I have a clear shot into the basket. By all means, show me how it is done. Let's see if we can do it. Well, that's a smoothie. That's about all I can do, boys. Yeah, works for me. All right. I'm going to try the same understable driver. Going to play nice and safe, hopefully. Not bad. All right, then. Not bad. Pete, you got about 100 feet to go here, but this appears to be somewhat of a fast green. Very fast green. So what I want to do is just throw a soft shot that will kind of skip toward the basket, but not hit the pole, because if you hit the pole, your subject go all the way downhill to OV. I can uh, certainly see how so that might happen. you can't be over aggressive on this shot. Nicely done. I'll tell you what, I love being in the south in the fall. This is just oh, gorgeous. We got good weather today. Okay, you got a little action with that. Three limbs there. Right here. Yeah. All right, so I've got uh, some branches I got to get around. Oh, looks Just like right. we're putting from oh, the same spot pretty same much. Spot. I'm thinking you can. Well, it's it's in my range. It's uh, not always a sure thing on an uphill putt like this. Yeah. Ah. Good job. Now that is a nice disc golf hole. Thank you. Pete, thanks for showing us around. Glad to be here. This, uh, this course, uh, this hole is going to cause some consternation today. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's Riverview Park in Augusta, Georgia. And if folks are looking for more information about disc golf in the area, where can they go? Just contact the Augusta Disc Golf Club, uh, Brian Graham or Pete May. All right. And uh, come golfing in Augusta. We're here with the Collins family who have come a long way to be here this weekend. You came all the way from Thailand, right? Well, yes. Actually, this is my hometown, but we do live in Bangkok, Thailand. Wow. Now, what's the disc golf scene in Thailand like? Unfortunately, it's not as big as I'd like. I guess you could say I'm kind of the uncontested Thai national champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not a big field. Uh, I take a lot of, I work with college students, mm -hmm. and I take a lot of them out and we'll play. Uh, and it's fun, but it's more like there are 10 million people in Bangkok and not many parks. Mm. So it's more like object golf, and it's usually people that we usually shoot for. No, not really. I know that's taboo. <laughs> so, Pete, what do, you, what do you do there in Thailand? I work with a uh, Christian organization called Campus Outreach, and I work with a church and work with the College Exchange Program. So what is it about disc golf that you and your family enjoy? Well, it's just a beautiful sport. I mean... Just watching the disc glide is so enjoyable. Uh, it's just f fabulous. And then uh, it's cheap, it's inexpensive, anybody can do it, and it's for all age groups. A uh, person can pick it up and start playing, and it's just simple and beautiful. Well, we hope you guys enjoy the uh, rest of the weekend here and uh, have a safe journey back home. Well, thank you very much. Can you say bye, guys? <laughs>Time for After the Round, when we sit down and talk with a disc golf legend. And they really don't come more legendary than this guy. 11-time world champion Ken Climo is with us. Ken, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brian. Now, we've talked before. Today, let's focus on the last five years, approximately 98 to 2002. And we'll begin in 98. Tell me what you're thinking, what you're shooting at the beginning of that year. Well, at that point, you know, I was still riding my streak of world championships of eight in a row at that point. And I was feeling pretty good. I think... I might have been not practicing as much I had in the early days, and it wasn't really affecting my game that much, but it did affect it a little bit. And I think that was just due to my choice to rather have longevity on the sport than to bust it out and be done with it. I want to, I want to last. I want to play the sport as long as I can. Were you starting to it. feel some, some negative physical uh, things going well, on? Just Were you getting a little sore? The one-sided aspect of the sport, you're twisting, rotating, you're twisting your back very hard, and you get a lot of knee and hip rotation. And, I've been doing things to counteract that recently in the last five years. I've been swinging golf clubs more and doing equalizer rubber stretches, doing throwing discs, actually throwing the disc left-handed a lot. And I've been equalizing it out a little bit. But in my first 10 years of playing, is 
where I didn't do that stuff, and I did start to feel a little something. So how were you, uh, how were you shooting? What kind of uh, tournaments were you winning that year in 98? Um, I know you were slowing down they a all, bit, weren't They you? all run together. The years run together so much, it's, it's hard. But I, I know I had a decent year that year. It wasn't one of my best ones. But I had a decent year. I won a few Super Tours. Anymore, with the level of play that's out there, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking to get in the top four, basically make the final nine type of thing. And if I've done that, I've played a pretty good tournament, and I'm happy with it. I'll win it even better. In the years prior to 98, you were touring very hard. You were playing you know, up to 26 tournaments a year. That year, you slowed down a little bit, correct? Correct. You know, my son's getting a little older. He's, uh, he's eight now, and he would have made him four back then. And he's, he's become a lot, lot more part of my life since I'm divorced. And I, I get him on the weekends, therefore, I've taken a few, few tournaments off to spend more time with him, and that's important to me. So in 2000, you finally did it. You got the 10th gold basket there in your backyard. Yeah, I, it was kind of bittersweet. Uh, 10 is 10 is 10, but 10 in a row would have been fancy. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you had to be, you know, gratified that you were able to, yes. to, be, I mean, to be there. Especially at the level of the game these days. The, everybody's picking up their game. There's players that are putting the lights out of it, driving the snot out of it, and just basically eating up the courses. You got to stay with that. So let's go on to 2001. That year, uh, now you've you're back on top again. Everyone has once again gunning for you. Not that they really ever stopped. But did you feel some renewed pressure in 2001? Now that you had the uh, the title again? No, not really. I I think it made me almost a little more lax because I'd won the tenth one and I'd done it and. I don't really feel pressure that much anymore. It's, it's just basically doing it or not doing it. Pressure might come in the last nine holes when it's tight. But all in all, it's, it's just about clearing your head, and getting a good thought process going. And that's what I've been trying to do the last three or four years now, is just have fun with the game. And how many events, if you recall, did you play in 2001? 2001, I believe, played 18 or 19 events. It's still a pretty solid, solid I mean, season. Yeah, when you, have your, when you have your son 26 weekends out of the year, and you play 20 tournaments, that leaves six for yourself. I would say uh, not very many of us could uh, handle that kind of schedule. Well, I get my time off during the week sometimes, and that's, that's where I get my sanity. I re my, renew myself, rest and relax, and the rigors of travel. Travel takes it out of you. Indeed it does. Yeah, I think we all are, are well aware of that. So uh, Minnesota, 2001. Minnesota. The, uh, the year of the heat wave. <sighs> that was the hottest temperatures I've ever seen, felt, been in. I live in Florida, and that was as hot as I've ever been. My hands wouldn't stop sweating. Uh, it, was, it was tough. I believe it affected me. But it wasn't like I didn't fight through the weather. I fought through the weather. I just didn't play my best. And I had a really bad round at the wrong moment. And at this point, it was your 13th World Championships that you'd participated in? Yes. So you've got more experience than probably any other guy there. Certainly more experience as a champion. You've got the heat to deal with. You've got you know, new up-and-coming competition. What happened there in Minnesota? Well. And semi-final round, it must, you must be referring to, and uh, was Eric Tracy, Steve Rico, Cam Todd, and myself. And I had an unfortunate happening on one hole. I took a quadruple bogey seven or something like that, and basically just didn't play my kind of golf the rest of the way in. And Cam Todd shot an unbelievable round. He was already ahead of me, and he shot just lights out golf. I don't even know if I would have played my best round that round and shot a hot final nine if I'd have even been able to catch him. So. That, that bad round really only kept me out of the finals, I think, rather than took me out of the chance to win it, because I don't know if I'd have caught Candy the way he shot. So are you saying that you let a bad hole affect the rest of your round? Probably a little bit, because I, I play to win. If I get second, third, or fourth, that's the same to me. 
I'm, it's a world championship. I'm playing to win. At the point I knew I wasn't going to win, I didn't give up. I just don't think that I focused as well. So you were looking at the big picture, saying, at this point, it's not going to happen for me. Maybe I'll slack off a little bit. I didn't slack off. Or maybe off I won't really. play my best golf. Maybe I won't be as. It's not as like I didn't try to play. I, might I think be. that was it. I maybe mean, just a little quick on things. It just it wasn't like I wasn't trying. I wasn't missing on purpose or anything or throwing it into the tree on purpose. I, <laughs> I just might have got a little quick and wanted to get done. So how so, did you how did you put that behind you? It wasn't really anything to put behind me. I mean, I play so many tournaments. Like I said, the World Championships is just another tournament. It's. It's a longer tournament, that's all. It's just another tournament, though. And uh, that's the way I think about the worlds. I really don't think they're that special of, like, someone's god because they won the worlds one year. I just think it's another tournament. I just happened to win that tournament 11 times. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> and speaking of 11 times, that takes us to this year, 2002, when you won an amazing 11th world title. I mean... It's just incredible. I, I don't know of any other sport where one player has dominated so many years. I'm sure there are. I've, I've heard about some tiddlywinks guys or something that won 15, 18 years, something like that. But, but an athletic An athletic sport. sport where it's mind, it's matter, it's, it's presence, it's physicality. It, yeah, um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think that no one's ever going to do it again in my sport. I don't know about any other sport, but it's this sport we're talking about, and I don't think it'll ever be done again, and I think that's something that I'll take to the grave with me and know that it's safe. Uh, that's basically what, how I feel about my whole legacy is I've done what I'm going to do. Any, anything beyond this point is just, it's just topping. And it feels good. It really does. I don't know why God picked me to to play disc golf as well as I, I have. But uh, I love the sport. I think that has a lot to do with it. I love watching the disc fly. And it's fun. And I meet a lot of new people and travel to a lot of cool places. When uh, you and I talked a long time ago and I asked you this question, and I want to repeat this because the answer I thought was, was uh, just so appropriate. I asked you, you know, hey, Ken, now, you've been on top of this game for so many years at the point just before it's really going to break out into the mainstream and there's going to be all the major media and all the money and all the celebrity and all the things that, that go with that. And I asked you, you know, how do you feel knowing that you, that you happened just before the big bust out? And you turned to me and you said, well, how do you think Gordy Howe feels? And I thought that was just so cool because it's so true. I mean. You know, it's a very similar situation. It's Bobby just, Jones, I mean, there's, yeah, that's, that's, I don't, I don't feel like I started the sport or anything like that. I don't claim to have, you know, anything like that. I just, I feel like I was the first real player that, that took the game up a level, I guess I should say. It took the game up, brought it to a new level, and that's a nice feeling. You know, the, like you talk about the bust out, the media. My son, maybe his son will benefit from that. And that, that's enough for me. Chances are very good that the sport will be at another level before this guy is out of the game. He's 11-time world champion Ken Climo. Ken, thanks for your time. Thank you, Brian. It's a pleasure.